What is DPI? How do you find the perfect one for your power? And how does the material affect the final result? Hello everyone, in this video we will answer each of these questions and by the end you will be able to improve the quality of your engraving in a cool way. My name is David, this is Virman. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we're off to a great start. DPI. What is that? DPI stands for dot per inch. The number of these dots in an image can be changed without changing the size of the photo itself. And the quality changes a lot with the number of DPIs. Here you might think, well, I'll set the DPI to the maximum. If for a virtual image, it will be a good solution. But in reality, we will face problems. A marker draws an image with a beam and it has its own side. So what is the relation between DPI and the width of the beam? Each individual pixel, the number of which we increase with DPI, is a shot that the laser has to make. So what happens when a huge number of pixels are concentrated in a small area? Nothing good there will be overlapping, overheating and distortion of the photo. That's why you need to choose the right DPI. DPI, together with line spacing, also affects the work speed. The larger it is, the longer the process will take. Dot width. So, there are different types of markers and each has a different spot size. A 10,600 nanometer CO2 laser has a spot size of about 0.01 millimeters. Fiber has a spot size of 0.001. And ultraviolet with the shortest wavelength gives the smallest spot, 0.0003 millimeters. But these are ideal figures. The width of the laser spot is also affected by your lens. The smaller the lens, the more focused the beam. That's why our managers always recommend lenses of 110 by 110 or smaller for detail, high quality engraving. By the way, if you need advice on which marker to choose, give us a call and we will advise you based on your needs and materials. Material. The material itself can also affect the quality of the engraving and its color. Each material reacts differently to heat. Firstly, heat can cause organic burning in wood or splash damaging metals. This can be avoided by choosing the right parameters. Secondly, the color changes. The image on wood will be dark. On black coated aluminum, it will be white. On other metals, it depends on the power and the color effect can be completely different. Well, let's try the picture again. Let's start with uh, how do we find the right resolution for our image? To do this, you need to do an experiment. The results will depend on the type of laser you have and its power. We are using an FLTT MOPA 30 watts. So we need to create a file strip with a gradient from black to white. Make five or six such strips with different DPI, for example, from 150 to 500. Let's engrave. Now, strain your eyes and pick up the one that looks the best. Obviously, we don't want a low DPI unless we have some specific artistic goals like imitating pixel style. And we don't want the highest either as there is noticeable overload and overlap. So, something in the middle. We'll choose a value you can see on the screen. Your ideal DPI might differ from ours depending on the type and power of your machine. If necessary, try a few more times, for example, by making strips with a difference of 10 DPI. There, now we have the ideal DPI for your marker. Why do white or black spots appear? The laser itself is round, the pixels are square. When you apply an image, the laser moves from one pixel boundary to another. See what happens? This is what causes dark or too bright spots when engraving. Using things like Gamma in Photoshop or the brightness and power map sliders in EasyCut will help avoid this. These are the results we got on different materials. We hope this has helped you get the perfect engraving. Firmer 
was with you. My name is David. Give us a like to support the channel and comment if you have any questions. Our engineers will be happy to answer them. See you in the next video.